Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father, to the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment if you do not repent. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room or aren't in the room. Peace to the saints that couldn't make it. Peace to the saints watching in on the camera. But the only thing we say to the wicked is repent so that you might live. Let's open up to... Uh, Isaiah chapter, uh, uh, actually, let's do, uh, let's do John chapter uh, 6, verse 43. This is John chapter 6, verse 43. Let's do a little bit of talking. It's John chapter 6, verse 43. <laughs> Yahushua therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. Mm -hmm. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, mm -hmm. and I will raise him up at the last day. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. And they shall be all taught of Yah. Every man therefore that has heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. Uh huh. If you want to, <clears throat> if you want to come unto the Son, you want to make it into the kingdom. You want to see the Father. One way to get there, you got to go through the door. And there's only one opening in that door. Right? Only one opening to get to the kingdom. Got to be through the door. You go up any other way, you're a thief and a robber. That's a book. Right? When we look at it, we have to get by the door. And the way you get by the door, he said, there's only way, one way to get there. He said, you got to hear and you got to learn. Right? He said, every, they were all taught of Yah. That means they all had to learn Yah's word. There's no other way around it. You got to hear and you have to learn. Right? That's what we're here for. Right? We're here to make sure that we hear the word and not just hear it and sit there and be, and be forgetful hearers. We got to learn it. And the only way to learn it is if you actually do it. You put it into practice. That's what James tells us. Right? You got to be doers of the word. You do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, the writer of Hebrews told us in chapter 5, you know what I'm saying? By reason of use, their senses were exercised. Right? So that's what we try to do. We come here and we try to Make sure that we can uh, hear the word. That way we can start putting it in use and exercise ourselves. Go on the, go, go on the strong meat. All right, let's get right into it. So last week we left off uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21, I believe. Let's jump in. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 1. We're going to get right into it. Let's try to see what type of ground we can cover. Eventually we'll get out of Deuteronomy and we'll start getting into Joshua. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of. Kind of tapping into our history and trying to see this is this is a lot of the history that these people kept from. They made us think they made us think we were just some dirty African, right? They made us think we were just some dirty African poking holes in our nose and and having these big old gauges hanging from our lips. That's what they try to make us think. They may try to feel like that all Africans are the same, right? There's Africans like that out there. They don't make no lie. Yeah. They they out there. They really like that. All Africans ain't the same. Hey, how you doing, Nana? Right? All Africans ain't the same. That's crazy. Right? All these white folks ain't the same. They don't do that to them. You got the Scottish. They like to wear skirts. Right? The Scottish and the, uh, what's the other one? The Irish. Right? They like to wear their kilts and all that. Then you also got the British. You know what I'm saying? Kings and queens and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got the, you got the Germans. You know what I'm saying? They like to, you know what I'm saying? Kill some people. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they up to. Lederhosen and Broadway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got all type, you got all these different white folks. All these people got different heritages and all of them hang on to their stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got these Italians. All these people, they hang on to all their separate heritage. Then they want to they wanna go to Africa. They say they're all of them the same. That's crazy. Don't believe in their stuff. Don't even believe in y'all came over here. Y'all were dirty and, and nasty Africans. That, that's not true. That wasn't our people. Had it been true, they wouldn't have grabbed us. They grabbed us because we is a respectable, peaceable people. The same reason they take advantage of us now. Right? Because we are intelligent, respectable, peaceable people. A forgiving people. 
built this thing. All right? We built this whole darn country. You think we built so you think we go we gonna get down, build the country and start and start and start uh and start uh working on fields and all that stuff. We ain't got no no prior knowledge of how to do that. We the intelligent people. These people would sit here and tell us lies, right? But that's what we're here to do. We're here to just learn some of our history. Once we learn history, that's how you, that that's how we get it, right? Well, once we learn our laws and we learn our histories, that's how we get to where we need to go. Right? That's how we start to straighten out our people. Everybody looking for every other solution to straighten out our people. Like Trump going to save us. You know, you got some Hebrews out there talking about Trump going to be uh, Cyrus. You know, so you know Cyrus let the people go. <laughs> now, he might be now. Though. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. He might be. What you darn looking at Cyrus for? When was the last? Tell me when Ezra was looking for Cyrus. <laughs> Tell me about when Nehemiah was like, oh, Cyrus about to. He ain't looking at Cyrus. We looking to God. Right? We trying to see, we trying to see what God going to do. God gonna show us Cyrus. If it's so be that he make it Trump, then I don't care about who do it. He a sinner anyway. Trump gonna end up in button hell. He, he better do the darn right thing. That's the right. He helping himself. If he do, ain't doing nothing for us. Any of these people let us free, they helping their darn self. They not doing nothing for us. They doing the will of the most high God. Just like us. When we obey God, we ain't doing nothing for God. We doing something for ourselves. We still un unprofitable servants. It's Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two, verse one. <clears throat> Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray, and hide thyself from, and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. This is law, <clears throat> right? This is our law. It taught us how to treat one another, right? We read the New Testament, treat others as you would be treated, and that's how we look at. It. We like, you know what? See, then you know that Jesus. You don't realize he got that from the law. This whole law, this is him. This is his spirit. Everything that he is speaking, it came from the same spirit that this law came from. It's the spirit of God. <clears throat> it's telling you, see your brother's ox, you just roaming around. You don't turn your head and just leave it out there. You know that's your brother's ox. You're going to take it back to him. That's our law. It taught us how to be kind to one another, how to love one another. How are you going to love your neighbor as yourself if you ain't never read the law? You don't understand the principles of the law. Nobody ever taught you the principles of the law, even if they didn't teach you the words of it, right? Even if a man don't teach you the exact words and how to remember the verses out of the law, if he don't teach you the principles that the law teach you, there's no way you can love your neighbor as yourself. Not according to the book. That's crazy. You have to have a man that's well-versed in the law or a man that's been taught principles of well-versed in the law. Otherwise, you're going to be lacking. Everything that we do is lacking. Keep going. Watch this. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house, and it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. Uh-huh. <clears throat> In like manner shalt thou do with his donkey, as so shalt thou do with his raiment, mm -hmm. and with all lost things of thy brothers which he has lost, and that, that you have found, shall you do likewise. Thou mayest not hide thyself. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Thou shalt not see thy brother's donkey or his ox fall down by the way uh -huh. and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertain unto a man. He said the woman should not do what? Wear that which pertains unto a man. And what else? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. That's it. For all that. So what a, what a, what a woman can't wear then? A man's garment. A man's clothes. That's simple. You got some of these churches out here that be teaching... A uh, woman ain't got no business wearing no jeans, don't wear no pants. Right? Woman can't wear pants. That's a man clothes. Stop that line. They make women pants. You can put on some women pants. You want to put on some women pants. How you just gonna say all pants are for women? How that makes sense? This stuff is unfair. We just look at stuff, and just start jumping out the darn window without analyzing nothing. You're saying all pants are for men. That's what they trying to say. Uh -huh. What I said it backwards? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's what they try to say. They try to say all pants are for men. <clears throat> right? So if a woman wears some pants, you know what she is? A sinner. She cross. She she cross dressing. If she put on some pants, stop that line. It's like Victoria's Secret though for a pants. Hey, what, what's wrong? Charlotte, Charlotte Russo don't sell women. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> okay, so if that's the case, you if all pants are for men, you go take your butt to the women's section and go put on some of them pants. Right. I bet you we gonna call you something. Right. Bet you we gonna look at you like eh, you might be a little funny, and that's gonna make you a hypocrite. If you wouldn't do it, you a hypocrite. Tired of these people, they sit here and tell these people this stuff, and then they got our women believing it. Right? And they oppress our women. We're going to oppress, oppress some people with the truth. 
It's some the truth can oppress you now, right? The truth, the truth, the truth to oppress, the truth to hold some hold some evil down. Right? It'll oppress the evil up out of you. Why are we gonna waste time oppressing something that ain't have nothing to do with God? Right? It's just a it's a waste of time for us. And it's hypocritical. If a woman can't wear pants, then that means a, a man can't wear a dress. And you know how we gonna like you go to um go to uh go to Exodus chapter 28. Show you how that can't be true. Right? If a woman can't wear pants, then a man, you know what a woman gotta wear if she can't wear pants? Gotta wear a dress. So if a woman wear a dress, that's a woman's garment. Guess what a man can't wear? Can't wear a dress. Let's see. It's uh this uh dude, I mean this is Exodus chapter 28, verse uh 31. <clears throat> They get mad at me. I say, I say a woman can't preach, right? A woman can't preach. She can't teach or have authority over a man. That's book. But I'm a, I'm a fair man because I go, I go based off of what the book say. The book say it, that's fine. I'm not about to sit here and tell you that a woman can't wear pants. The book ain't never said that. That'd be a lie. I'm going to tell you what the book say. I ain't out here just trying, to, just trying to say women can, can't do a whole bunch of stuff just because I can. That don't make sense. I'm going to tell you what the book says. Get her out of Azariah, go play. Okay. 28 verse what? This is uh, 28 verse 31. Let's listen to the book, and right? The woman can't wear pants. That's what we, that's what we, that's what we just been told by all these uh, Pentecostal. You know, all these sinners and all these denominations don't know what they darn talking about. Why don't you read, why don't you read where it say, the, 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 when the book tells you that you can't have no, uh, no uh, heresies, Right? That people involved with heresies gonna end up in uh, in hell. Why don't you read that? And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all of blue. It's a what? A robe. <clears throat> uh oh. It's a robe. We ain't talking about the little robes that you know what I'm saying that tie up. You know what I'm saying? The one you get in the morning. You know what I'm saying? When you get out the shower, that ain't the robe he talking about. He talking about a darn dress. You put that thing right on over you. That thing open in the bottom too. Keep going. Watch this. And there shall be a hole in the top of it. Uh-oh. You notice he didn't say, okay, so let's let's think this thing through. You got a robe, and it got a hole in the top of it. Did that sound like a robe now? Sound like a skirt. You got, I mean, let's just think it through. A robe ain't got no hole in the top. Robe that we thinking about, a robe, that thing open right on up. That's just one piece of cloth. It ain't got no hole. You know what I'm saying? Just one piece of cloth. It's not talking about the same robe you think it's talking about. It's talking about a darn, it look like a dress. All right, let's talk about it. <clears throat> and there shall be a hole in the top of it. In the midst thereof, it shall have it shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as if as it were the whole of an hair bergon, uh -huh. that it be not rent. <clears throat> and beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof, the bells of gold between them round about. Mm -hmm. A golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. Uh -huh. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister. And his sound shall be heard when he goes in unto the holy palace, holy place before the Lord when he comes out that he die not. All right. So, so he, he, they, they put bells on the bottom of his garment uh, because he is the high priest. And the high priest is the only one that used to go into the holiest of holies in the tabernacle. And so since nobody else could go in there, they kept bells, you know what I'm saying? And that way he died not, you know what I'm saying? They 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 hear him if he stopped moving, you know what I'm saying? Basically it's the logic behind it. So they do it so he died not. You know, because way well, ain't nobody supposed to go in there. You go in there too much sin on you, most I got shush. He had to strike your butt darn down. You know what I'm saying? They now they know he stopped moving so they could, you know what I'm saying, maybe pull him out or something. I don't know. All right, let's see. You do that. I ain't you going to there. I ain't going to there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they pull him out, who knows, you know what I'm saying? Let's see what they're talking about. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like to the engravings of a signet, holiness to the Lord. Uh huh. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace that it be upon the mitre. Mm -hmm. Upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be. Mm -hmm. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead and Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hollow in all their holy gifts. Okay. And it shall be always upon his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. Okay. And thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen, and thou shalt make the mitre of fine linen, and thou shalt make the girdle of needlework. 
And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles. Mm -hmm. Notice bonnets. that they all have girdles. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Keep going. And bonnets shalt thou make for them for glory and for beauty. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him, and shall anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them that they minister unto me and to the priest's office. Uh -huh. the priest's office. Oh, sure. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their this, Thou shalt make them what? Linen breeches. What are breeches? To uh -huh. cover what? Hold on. To cover what? To cover their nakedness. So hold on. Why would you need, I mean, you just got this beautiful robe. Why would you need breeches? What are breeches? Underwear. I'm trying to figure out why would you need, why would you need you some shorts to put underneath? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you covered up real nice with, with this robe, right? You gotta put on some darn shorts to cover up that nakedness. Somebody look up your darn skirt. You can't be standing over the altar in the holy place. You, you can't stand. Go to, uh, what is that? Uh, I forgot. It's Exodus, uh, it has to be Exodus 20, right? Because it came right after uh, the, the Ten Commandments. It's Exodus chapter 20. Give me, give me, you know what I'm saying? What's the last verse in Exodus chapter 20? It's chapter, it's verse 26. Uh, you want 2026. It's what? Exodus 2026. It's Exodus chapter 20, verse we'll 26. 20, 25, 25. This is Exodus chapter 20, verse 25. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it a hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Mm-hmm. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto my altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. <clears throat> That's it. He said, neither shalt thou go up my altar with steps, otherwise your nakedness would be discovered thereon. You know the creeps, the women, you know, you ever seen on the movies, you got the construction workers, you know what I'm saying, you got a woman walking, and they be like, oh, because they can kind of see under, you know what I'm saying? Same thing. Most like God said, no, nah, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? You'll mess around how your, your nakedness shown. Talking about a man. Right? So if a, if, a, if a woman can't wear pants because she got a cloth that wraps around her individual legs, right? One leg individually, the cloth wraps around. And that's designed for a man. Right? You know, they don't care if you stylize it for a woman. It's still initially designed for a man. Then you have to say that a dress was originally designed for a man, too. All right? Because, I mean, that's just an open bottom that covers both legs. All right? Same thing. All right? So that was designed for a man, too. Woman can't wear that either, then. What's she going to wear? Hypocrite. What's she going to wear? All right? If you try, you try to twist it up, see, no, a man, see, he wore it like that, but the man had a girdle. That's true. Right? What the man would do, he would put a girl right here, and he would tie his stuff up. So you mean it's the same garment, same exact garment, but it's stylized different for a man. So now what you going to say, hypocrite, when she got pants that's stylized for her? Either way you do it, the most I got to line your butt up. Either way you do it, he covered himself. He made sure he talked about the, the clothing of a man. He made sure he talked about it just so he can line y'all. Stop lying to these people. Stop going to doing all this extracurricular studies. Just sit here and go with what the books say. The books say do it, then do it. The book don't say do it, then shut up. Give me uh, give me Deuteronomy chapter 22. We'll pick up where we left off. Anaka asked a question too. You know what I'm saying? I got a question from Facebook. Uh, she said, uh, what did you say? She said, you know what I'm saying? She know the women. Go ahead and read it for me. Mm-hmm. You can skip that part. <laughs> start, start where it said going back to women can't teach. She said, does that go for correction too? Right? So she want to know if a woman can't teach, you know what I'm saying, does that, does that apply for her correcting? Right? If she sees somebody do something wrong, it's a man. Is, he, is she able to correct the man? Right? She able to say, you know what, that was wrong. Right? 
book say according I mean according according to the book it say very clearly a woman cannot teach or usurp authority over a man did that cover correction no right if she corrected she ain't teaching she just saying listen that was wrong right she ain't opening up no book she ain't telling her this the, this the bible verse this is what you need to go to and you know you want to know how we can prove that out We got judges that were women. Deborah. We have prophets that were women. Right? What did the prophets do? Tell them what God said. Thus they provided the correction. That's as the Lord. Don't go to that place. Hush. Right? <laughs> they provided correction. Hush. You know what I'm saying? People in the wrong direction. They doing, they doing something that they're not supposed to do. Most high God comes, they line their butts up. This is what the most high God said to me. Woman can definitely correct your butt, huh? See, that's, that, that's, where these, that, that's where a lot of these Hebrews get it wrong. They try to control these women. They try to control them and put them, you know what I'm saying, put them in a place where you know you can't say nothing because we men. Ain't what the books say. Ain't what the books say. Yeah, books say in the congregation she should learn in silence. That's true, right? That's true. You can't get away from that. She should learn in silence. But that don't mean y'all y'all apart and y'all not at the con congregation or not with the congregation. You do something wrong. She can correct your darn butt. Don't even ask my wife. She can't say nothing to me. Ask my husband. No. Your butt do something wrong. She can correct your butt. See, you didn't see Sarah. I didn't. Yeah. Sarah I didn't correct uh, Abraham. Yeah. What and what the Most High God say to her? Listen to your wife. You better listen to your darn wife, boy. You even lost your darn mind. What's wrong with you? That's a book. Don't let these people keep lying to y'all, just telling y'all whatever they want to hear. Learn the book so you'll know that you'll be protected. You see all these women, all these women being tricked by men because they know the word well. They can quote a couple Bible verses. Had these women thinking whatever. See here, a lot of these women learn the book so you can protect yourself. The most high God is for you. He ain't for these liars. He for every man and every woman who want to turn their life and live after the way of the most high God through his son named Yah Yahushua. He's for all of us. He ain't for these liars. He ain't about here and protect these liars. He has set these liars up. All we got to do is believe the word and live out there. It's Deuteronomy chapter whatever. What is it? Chapter, chapter what? 22, 22 5. verse 5. The it's woman. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. I just want y'all to believe the truth. I ain't, I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to trick nobody. I'm not trying to sprinkle no, no magic dust. I'm not trying to, you know, run a coat, as they say. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got time for none of this stuff. I'm trying to line this stuff up, make sure y'all know the truth. Sometimes that thing going to be uncomfortable for you. Sometimes that thing going to be what you want to hear. Say what, Cole? Ain't nobody here. <laughs> you know it's the wackest coat you ever heard. You know what I'm saying? We got enough Kool-Aid to go to everybody. Ain't nobody here to drink it. You know what I'm saying? This is uh this is uh Deuteronomy chapter twenty two, verse five. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Mm -hmm. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Yeah, cross dressing, you see these women, all these sex changes and all this stuff, these people ain't going crazy. You know what's crazy? They gonna look they crazy. These people are sick for seeing that stuff and telling themselves that it's not sick. I ain't even mad at the, 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 at, the, at the transvestite and all these people that do all this stuff. These people sit here and look at these. Listen, I'll listen to a radio. Blew my darn mind. I'll listen to the radio. They said the lesbians were protesting against the trans. I don't know how you say it, but the, the, the men who had a surgery to become a woman, right? They were protesting against them because this man, or these men, had a surgery to become a woman and then called themselves lesbians because they were attracted to women, right? So I started off as a man, <laughs> had a sex change to become a woman, and then I'm attracted to women. So now I call myself a lesbian. So the actual lesbians are looking at him and be like, no, you're not a true lesbian. You can't call yourself that. Right? So they mad like you can't call. So now it's infighting in the, uh, what they call the LGBT community. You know what I'm saying? It's infighting. They going back and forth. And people look at this stuff and they say, no, this is normal. This is sick. Like, it's absolute sickness. And nobody, you're not going to sit here and just stand out and say this is complete confusion. These people just doing stuff just for attention. Just because they go on with every whim. And then they teach this stuff to our kids. In schools now, you tell my wife would tell they teaching this stuff in schools and, and, and encouraging people in schools to believe this stuff.
confusing these kids. You got one man that came out. He said it's abuse. He said I I, I had the you know I, I went through the the surgeries and all that, and I came back, and that's not something that we should be teaching to the kids. I've been through it. I know what my mindset was. I was sick. He said I was sick. He said that's not something we should be teaching to kids before we teach them. You know what I'm saying? Before we teach them so many other things. Before we say they can have a drink, right? Before we can say they can smoke a cigarette. We teaching them that you are really a woman, even though you feel like a, a boy. How much sense does that make? It's sick and it's confusing. <clears throat> it's not the first time in history people were sicked out like this. And uh, these, these nasty, what was it, Greeks? Them nasty Greeks used to get it. It used to, be, it used to they, they, they wrote about it. It used to be a pleasure for, for, for a, a, a mother and a father to give her son to one of these pedophiles. One of these pedophile philosophers. All these philosophers that, that they tell us about, they was pedophiles. Right? These wise men, they'd get these kids to them, and they'd play around with these kids. They'd mess around with these kids. They write about that stuff. They write all this, right? They got books, they talk about all that stuff. They get Aristotle and uh, uh, Socrates uh, and all that stuff. Pedophiles. Uh, statues and them naked dudes all around. Because they're the sickos. Crazy. This ain't the first rodeo. This world been sick for a long time. Stuff just turned to. Rear yourself up in a different way. Right? When the, when somebody going to tell the people the truth? When somebody just going to look at it and be like, yeah, that's confusion. Right? I don't have a problem with it. Y'all do whatever y'all want to do. I'm not, but I ain't about to sit here and act like it's normal. I'm not going to tell you. Tell you. I'm not, listen, I don't care. You do whatever. That's your business. You do it. You just make sure you stay away from me and my family with that stuff. But you do what you want to do. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's normal. And I'm also not going to be a hypocrite and try to act like, Gay people is the worst thing that ever happened to the world. There's a whole lot of fornicators out here. A whole lot of people cheating on their wives. A whole lot of people doing a whole bunch of stuff. And listen, all that stuff is just as bad. But I'm sitting here and spend my whole time talking about a gay person when right next to me, I got somebody who's my friend and he's sitting here, he, he, he's sleeping around. So I'm going to spend my whole night talking about a gay person and then my friend, he's sleeping around. I ain't got no problem with him. Let me tell you about the hell they all both going to. Make no darn sense. Get you a darn woman, you marry, and you, you you be kind to her. And you make that thing work out. We ain't got no time to be sitting here and playing with this stuff. All right? Go ahead and uh go ahead and keep reading. <clears throat> if a bird's nest chanced to be before thee in the way in any tree or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dam sitting upon the young. Or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take the dam with the young. All right? I mean, that's just wise. You know what I'm saying? You ain't about to take the bird with the young. You, you know what I'm saying? You got to make a choice. You got to have some fried chicken tonight, or you got to have some scrambled eggs. You know what I'm saying? Which one you want? <laughs> Matter of fact, that ain't even book. Watch this. Keep going. That ain't even book. You ain't even got no choice. Watch what the book say. You but, ain't got no choice. But thou shalt in any wise let the dam go and take the young to thee. He ain't give you a choice. You have a scrambled eggs tonight. Why would that make sense for us? Why, why you have to let the bird go and you can take the eggs? So you can have eggs later. It would be crazy if it, that's the source of the eggs. Why would you take the source of the eggs? No, I'm going to take your eggs. You'll make some more. Right? It's just wise. The, the law for us is wise. It's a lot of people, just greedy people. They had chop up the bird, had them nice fried chicken. Nice fried chicken and some scrambled eggs on the side. Got chicken and darn waffles with eggs. They got the whole darn, the whole plate. That's a good meal for one day. <laughs> now, what do you do tomorrow? Meanwhile, you can have this one chicken. That thing be laying eggs for you for the next darn three years. How long chickens last? Like a couple years. A couple years? That thing be laying chicken for the next three years. And you know what else you're going to do because you're smart? You're going to let one of them chickens grow up. You know what I'm saying? One of the eggs they lay, you're going to let that thing grow up. So now that one can lay some chicken, some, some eggs for you. Now every now and again, now you got a whole, you know what I'm saying, whole thing of chickens. Every now and again, now you can have you some chicken. You know what I'm saying? You take you a little chicken. I mean, that's just wise. That's how we do it. That's what our law teaches, how to be wise. All right? Keep going. Wrong out some chicken, just let the bird go. But thou shalt in any wise let the dam go and take the young to thee, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days. Mm -hmm. When thou buildest the new house, 
then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, mm -hmm. that thou bring not blood upon thine house, mm -hmm. if any man fall from there. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Let mm -hmm. the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Unless, right? right. Don't, don't sit here and mix up all the, all the plants that you grow and everything on grow on top of each other. Most of God said, you don't do that stuff. It's wise. You separate your stuff. You go out to these fields right now. You're going to see a strawberry field, just a strawberry and corn field just mixed all in together. No, you're going to go through and you're going to see all corn in this field. Then all, the, all wheat in this field. You're going to see a whole field of watermelons growing right here. Right? I didn't drove down south. They got all these things, just huge fields of one thing. These people ain't darn crazy. It's his law. It makes sense. People look at it because they don't know nothing. They look at it and be like, see, the law just, I don't know why it's commanding you. Because it makes sense to do it that way. What would it make sense to mix? I'm going to put here and put, put grapes, have a grapevine growing, and it's going to wrap around and choke all my corn out. Okay, well, now you just wasted time. It doesn't make sense. Let the things that grow together grow together. Keep going. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and and donkey together. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture wherewith thou coverest thyself. That's right. Or our people wore fringes. Right? We wore the fringe at the bottom of our, our, our uh Bottom, bottom of our vesture. It's like the, uh, the shirt, the little Hebrew shirt that I wore. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's got, you know what I'm saying? He got the little fringes at the bottom of it. You know what I'm saying? That was our law. That was, that's some of the things that separate us. This was our culture. Right? Keep going. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring her up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came into her, I found her not a maid. Right? So in other words, I found her not a virgin. Right, so I took this woman, and when I came into her, I found her not a, or not a, not a virgin. Right, I expected to have a virgin. She told me she was a virgin. Her daddy told me she is a virgin. I took the woman to marry her, and then when I got her, she wasn't so. Right, so then he hated the woman. He said, "You know what? Forget that. She lied to me. I married her, and she lied to me. Right, before we can even get it going." Okay, let's hear about it. What, what's going to happen to the woman then? Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity uh -huh. unto the elders of the city in the gate. Uh -huh. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hates her. Uh -huh. And look, he has given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. All right, so Pops can come through and he can, he can prove it. Our culture would have it that way. Right? That the man, right? We, we read last week, we, uh, was it last week? Number 30, where it said if the woman was in a, in a, in a man's house, that was last week, if a woman was in a man's house or in her, uh, her father's house, then he could pretty much make the call in terms of what vows she could keep or not. It was a week before that. It was a week before that? Yep. Yeah, it's what, this is what vows that she can keep or not, right? Because he lived in her house. So when, when a, a, a young lady got married, the father handed her off. Right, so these that's how things work. That's how our thing works. So the way he uh, the way it was set up, that if she had her virginity, that the father would keep the tokens of that. Right? When it was her first time laying with a man, like then in, uh, Genesis with Judah. When Judah's son died. Exactly. Right, right? and that thing passed pass along. Yeah. Right? But he she would he would keep the token because what a woman would do, the woman is gonna release blood, right? And then that gets on the the uh that gets on the uh you know what I'm saying on whatever they whatever garment they lay on, right? And so the 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 dad it was part of our culture for the dad to keep that garment as proof to show that this is my daughter. Virginia was a beautiful thing, right? This is something that we celebrated. My daughter was a virgin, and now I gave her to a man to take care of her for the rest of her life, to protect her for the rest of her life. We lost that in our culture. Absolutely. Right? We lost that in our culture. We don't have that beauty. We don't have that 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 prestige of having a, a pure daughter. Right? Now we just everybody just do whatever they want to do. Just run however they want to do. We don't even expect to have pureness when we when we uh, lay down with a woman now. Right? So now we got to get to a place where we learn our history. Where did we come from? How did we get to the place where we are? Just following after these people. That the that the Gentiles that think like this. Right? That was never our culture to, to, to react like that. We always had a sense of purity. Even the sinners amongst us wanted that purity. 
right? But we just don't have it anymore. We just have to get back to it and start to re respect it, right? But anyway, if the if the if the pops could prove it, right? Then that's his butt. Let's hear about it. And lo, he has given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. Uh, Pop's like, she, he said she wasn't a virgin, but these are the tokens right here. It's the proof right here. What else? And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Mm -hmm. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. Right? He get his butt whooped. Right? You sit there and you spread that lie about that woman and the pops can prove it. They gonna go down and they gonna whoop your darn butt. They gonna give you some lashing. Do you, saw, you know what I'm saying? They gonna give, you gonna get your butt whoop. you get to run them out. You know why they don't kill them? Why do you think they don't kill them? Because you still gotta take care of her. You still gotta take care of her. You hate her. You don't wanna be with her. You, you, you change your mind about marriage. You try to bring up a lie. You sit your butt down. I'm gonna beat your butt. Then after that, you get your butt in there and you take care of that woman for the rest of her life. The people look at it, that ain't fair. The woman, because we don't hear about the woman, she gonna get stoned if she lying. That ain't fair. The woman gets stoned. Yeah, okay. You think it ain't fair. You think it ain't fair. You ever put a, you see, you try to put a man with a woman he don't want to be with and make him take care of her. You see who in the unfair situation. Yeah, that thing can last for a lifetime. Yeah, boy, you sit your butt down you take care of her for the rest of your life. And we still got laws to protect her. Right. Our law say you gotta, you, you gotta take care of her. Let her come to the judge talking about he ain't taking care of you. Go get some more darn lashing, boy. You ain't getting out of here. Don't try to get yourself killed. You ain't getting out of here that quick. You know what I'm saying? You know, see, you still going to darn take care of it. These people don't know no law and they don't know no righteousness. Keep going. And they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. Mm -hmm. And she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. He better sit your butt down, and you got to take care of that book. You got to pay the pops. That's righteous. You got to get your butt whooped, and you got to take care of her. You going to sit your butt, you going to go back home with a black eye. Mm -hmm. Give that man his money. What's wrong with you? Try to bring that lie against a virgin of Yisrael. You lost your darn mind. That ain't even part of it. We don't even believe in nothing like that. Keep going. But if this thing be true... Uh oh. And the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel. Uh oh. If Pops can't prove that thing. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, mm -hmm. because she has wrought folly in Israel. Uh -huh. to, lay, to play the whore in her father's house, so shall thou put evil away from among you. Mm -hmm. Keep going. If a man be found lying with a woman. Matter of fact, if you look at this, you know what I'm saying? What does this to put us in mind of? What about Joseph? Uh, Give me Matthew chapter 1. Oh, oh, I'm thinking he's talking about Genesis Joseph. I'm like, wait a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, nah, give me Matthew chapter 1. Remember, Joseph, you know what I'm saying? He a betrothed to, to Mary. This is Yahushua's mom, right? He a betrothed to Mary. And Mary ended up pregnant. Books say it was before they got together. You know what I'm saying? Mary ended up pregnant. So you know what his thought was? Wait. This is what he could have did. Right? He could have he could have sit there. He could have been like, she pregnant. She wrought folly in Israel. She played the whore in her father's house. Right? This would have been all legitimate claims. And then her butt would have been darn stone. Quick. Ain't even, we ain't got to kill no time trying to prove nothing. Y'all patrol. Y'all haven't got married yet. And you darn pregnant. He ain't slept with your butt. And you darn pregnant. Oh, that's 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 clear, open, open, closed case. Right? That thing would have been done. But watch out. Watch out he handled it. Go tell TJ. TJ! Yeah. Take your brother to the bathroom. Hurry up. Alright? Watch out he handled it. He handled it a little bit different. You saw our law say handle it right there, right? So right there we read and it told us how to handle it. A man hate his wife. Right? He should go. Notice that it said if he hate his wife though. Right? That was specific. He hate this law is very specific. You got to pay attention when you read this law. You mess around and take something, want to run with it, could it tickle your little fancy? You run with it and then run into a darn wall, right? Let's look at it. Now the birth of Yahushua was on this wise. Uh huh. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, uh huh. She was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Mm hmm. 
before they came together, the book said, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Right? Keep going. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. Being a what? Just man. See, this is where, this is where there's a lot of people out there that be like, well, see, Jesus wasn't born of a virgin. Right? Yahushua, he wasn't born. Mary wasn't a virgin. See, actually, uh, 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 Mary and Joseph already slept together. So the book just said before they came together, first of all. Then after that, it says Joseph as a what man? A righteous man. As a just man. Just Keep man. going. And not willing to make her a public example. And not willing to make her a public example. We just made, we just read the version of making her a public example. Right? You remember, the pops in that situation gets to say, here's the token of virginity. And if he can prove it, he say, this man spread falsehoods about my daughter publicly. Right? That's a public example. So that's what he's talking about. He said he wasn't willing to say publicly that she slept around on him. Right? He wasn't willing to do that. Right? Because he was a just man. Let's see what else happened. Was minded to put her away privately. But he instead wanted to put her away privately. Right? So now tell me. He gonna tack something else. Yahushua was born of this woman who actually secretly slept with Joseph before they were supposed to sleep together because they had uh, betrothed. Right? And this is a just man. This is this. Let, let's see what a just man. How a just man. So let's see. We patrol. We marry. We about to get married. We engage, right? We not supposed to have sex until we actually, you know, what I'm saying, hello, until we actually, you know, what I'm saying, seal the deal with the marriage. So it's too early. It's not that day yet. But let's just say we had sex, right? So then after that, I'm a just man because I have, and I got you pregnant. And I didn't want to make a public spectacle of you. As a just man, I'm going to divorce you and put you away privately. So let me see. I chose to, to be engaged with you. Then I chose to sleep with you early. And because you got pregnant, I'm a just man because I'm going to divorce you for that? Where do these people get this from? How, what logic does it come from that he slept with her? That's not like this doesn't make logical sense if he slept with her. A just man would divorce. How would, why would a just man divorce a woman because he slept with her? That makes no sense. That's it. That's it. That's this culture. This, that this generation just man. That's what these people do. Here and lead it with sleep with these women and lead these women and still call themselves right. That's some liars. Y'all bra darn brains is messed up. I don't know what's wrong with the book. Just said very clearly before they got together, and then said he was a just man. He didn't want to put her put her to shame in front of everybody. Why would she be ashamed if he's the one who chose to sleep with her? Sleep with her. Stop all that lying. That's all. I mean, every page in this book is a lie told about it. And I'm just trying to figure out how these people think. How you? How you? What are you doing? I better stop listening to these people. Book tell you clearly, the rock was made without human hands. Smashed the smashed the image in the dream in Daniel. The whole book telling you made without human hands. We right. just read. We just read the altar. Yeah. You can't put no chisel on the altar. Can't touch. Can't touch nothing holy. Nothing holy can be made with human hands. And then they go and say that she wasn't a virgin. When the whole book is alluding you to. The fact that this man was created without human hand. They missed the whole point. Missed the whole book. Just over little stuff. Just because they don't want to accept little stuff. All right? That's all right, though. So let's get back to it, right? So you got this man. He wanted to put her away privately. Right? But our law, we just thought, read the law about if you hate your wife. Right? Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24. That's why it was needful for the angel to come and tell Joseph. Don't Matter of fact, keep reading. Yeah, keep reading. Yeah, Let's like, get that why part too. The angel come and have to tell you that, you know. Yeah, keep reading just so we can get that part. That's a good point because I think it's right after that. But while he thought on these things, behold, this is Joseph. So while Joseph thought on these things, he was about to put her away privately. So he's kind of considering it. He like, man, I ain't gonna put her to shame. Like it has to take a divine intervention for you to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. She's not pregnant by a man. Who's gonna think that she's not pregnant by a man? Yeah. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? He looking at it, he looking like, this crazy. <laughs> I know I didn't sleep with this woman, and she's pregnant. I'm going to go ahead and put her butt away. I ain't going to get her stoned. I love her still. 
I ain't gonna get her butt stoned, but she done messed up now. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go ahead and put her away, right? And so then, what happened? For while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Uh huh. For thy for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So now tell me why a just man, if he got his wife pregnant, why would he be scared to take her as a wife? I mean, I'm just trying to, it just doesn't make logical sense what these people be trying to teach. It don't just pass the simple logic test. We were sitting down talking with some brothers, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was that, last year? Yeah. Sitting down talking with some brothers and they trying to make sense out of it. Then we sitting there lighting their darn butt up. They stutter and they can't figure it, but they won't accept it, though. They jumping all over the place. We start the whole conversation. Well, let's just go with what the book says. The book says. After that, they get talking, well, sometimes you got to, you know what I mean? What were they talking about? Sometimes it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's not always right with the book. Okay, that's all. This is this conversation. Good at this point. You start off the book, well, you know, the Bible always right. We get down to the nitty gritty. Well, you know, sometimes, you know, Paul, Paul is just Paul. Paul was you know what I mean? What Paul says. You know what I'm saying? This was just yeah. written. It ain't like you hearing the actual words of Yahushua. Yeah, okay. They call him Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeshia. Oh, yeah, Yeshia. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They call him Yeshia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Now, we good on this conversation. Let me go ahead and wash my hands of this thing. Yeah, so they were saying no what Paul sense. was saying wasn't necessarily what God was saying. Yeah, that thing, so, soon as you, soon as you get to putting them facts on that butt, they start backing that thing all the way up. They start sounding like the rest of these Christians. You know what I'm saying? Start lighting their butt up. You know what I'm saying? We, when we talk, man, we talk about the, what the books and we ain't, I don't have to get up here and do a whole lot of pontificating and making up stuff and trying to, I just, I just read the thing. We can just break down simple logic. We know what it's saying. And you're going to see everything I'm saying is lining up with this book. And if it ain't, I'm a liar. Ain't going to be his book, though. If somebody lying, it's going to be me. It definitely ain't gonna be this book. That's why I let. That's why we read right out of it. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. Uh, we read out of this book. Long we read the words right, that thing gonna be right. Grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-four. Let's see how. Let's see how, how Joseph came to the conclusion that he can put her away privately. Because a just man, he can't just make up his own laws. The law say the woman got to be stoned if she uh, sleep around. And she got to be stoned. He can't put her away privately if he ain't got no law for it. Right? So let's see. A lot of people think, you know, the law is unfair to women and all that. Okay, let's see. You on verse 1? Yep. It's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he has found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Right? So this is the same thing. When they say uncleanness, it ain't just talking about uh, it ain't just talking about just doing whatever you want to do or you just don't like her. Uncleanness is talking about fornication. It ain't talking about leprosy. It ain't talking about none of that stuff. It's talking about fornication. Right? It's lewdness. Right? He found, he found in her that she slept with someone before they came together. Right? He, he was expecting to get a virgin. She told him it was a virgin. Pops told her it was a virgin. Now, find out she slept with someone beforehand. Same situation. Only difference is he has the right, according to this law, to divorce her privately. He can give her the bill of a divorcement. She continues to live, and she can go and get her another read. She can go get her another husband. Watch this. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. She can go get her another husband. Right? That's the book. So it's the same situation. Handled differently, and both are according to the law. Right? It just goes based off of when it happened, did the man hate his wife? And did he make it public? Or when it happened, did he have compassion on his wife? It's the exact same thing that Yahushua is doing for us. It's two sides of the thing that we can show up with. We can obey the man, and he'll have compassion. Right? Then we die to our current covenant and we can live to the new covenant yeah, right we get a divorce be we be we be separated from the current covenant and then we can be married to Yahushua in the new covenant high priest gotta have a virgin wife right that's the only way that thing lined up because we all played the harlot we all sin so if we all sin 
That means we got to end this covenant. Now, he can put us away two different ways. He can have a stone now, right? Or he can put us away privately. Either way, we got to die. Right? In a literal sense, either way, we got to die. Right? But we all sure he can bring us back. That's putting us away privately. You know what I'm talking about? When you die and your butt go to hell, well, that thing it. That's the stone. Right? How you want it? Cardio or cardio? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? You just got to choose how you want it. All right? Keep going. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. Mm -hmm. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and gives it in her hand. Matter of fact, go to, uh, go to uh, Matthew 19. Watch this. This is Matthew chapter 19. All right. When that thing say uncleanness in, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, it's talking about fornication. All right? That's why this would make a lot more sense. There's a lot of people that, that didn't confuse themselves over what Yahushua said in Matthew 19. But this thing make a, make a lot more sense once you know the law. It's yeah, just right. because we don't know the law. We never learn the law. When he is talking, he's referring to the law. It's the book. It's Matthew chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that when Yahushua had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judah beyond Jordan. Mm -hmm. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put his wife for put away his wife for any cause? For right. every cause? So they asked a question, they was testing him. Do you think in Deuteronomy 24, it was saying that you can put your wife to, away for any old reason? That was the test. They were trying to say, let's see if he really know his law. Because they knew. They were trying to say, let's see if he really know his law. Let's see if he think, yeah, you can just put your wife away for any old reason. That's not what the law is about. It's said fornication. But watch how he answered this question. It's a smooth man, y'all sure. I'm telling you. There ain't nobody messing with y'all sure. It's a smooth man. Watch how he answered the question. You don't even realize he answered it the way he do it. Watch this. And he answered and said unto them. Remember, uncleanliness is fornication. They asked him, can you put your wife away for any old reason? Right? Watch how he answered this. And Remember, the answer is fornication. I didn't want y'all to know. The answer to the question is, you can put your wife away for fornication. Right? But watch how he answers it. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So first thing he do, let me correct your whole thinking. Right? Let me get beyond your question. Let me just correct your whole thinking. First of all, have you not read in the beginning he made a male and female? Keep going. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to, unto his wife. Uh-huh. And the twain shall be one flesh. He said, and then both of them going to end up being one flesh. He like, let me just give you the. The rock solid, this is where it started. This was the original intention, right? What are you going to say next? That's why they are no more twain but one flesh. Uh-huh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Right? So in other words, he's saying our whole conversation, where we starting, shouldn't even be talking about no divorce. We shouldn't even be talking about no putting away. He said the whole point of this whole thing is that two people become one flesh. And therefore... Don't let no man put them away. Right? Don't, know, don't let no man split them apart. Right? So he come back and refocus the talk. The talk should be about staying together. Right? Let's keep going, though. Then they say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Moses, because the hardness of your heart suffered you to put your put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. What does it mean when you have a hard heart? You're unwilling to forgive. I'm willing to. It can't be penetrated. Can't be penetrated. That means you disobedient to God, right? So out of disobedience, the Most High God looked and said, "Y'all gonna be disobedient." So Moses gave them the bill of divorce. Let's hear about why a man can divorce. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. Except it be for what? Fornication. 
still according to the law. Except it be for fornication. What's fornication? You know what these people will tell you nowadays? Because they can't make sense of this. You know what they're going to tell you? See, fornication is like a, a catch-all of all types of sexual sin. It, it, see, fornication includes adultery. And now, you ain't never read no Bible where fornication and adultery are the same. Or are even used interchangeably. Right? Fornication is fornication. Adultery is adultery. Right? This is talking about you finding uncleanness in a woman that you expected to be a virgin. She told you she is a virgin. Her, her daddy told you it was a virgin. And when you got with her to be married with her, you found out she really wasn't. He said that would be a reason for divorce. A lot of us, we can't use that reason. We knew we wasn't getting one. Right? We knew what we were getting into. Ain't nobody trick us to that another. Don't go try, try to divorce your wife. Well, well, she wasn't a virgin. No, I said, you a sinner. <laughs> You ain't a just man. You a darn sinner. Right? He said, only for the reason of fornication. You thought you were getting a virgin, and it turned out that she wasn't. Just like the law say. The exact same thing. Watch him keep going. This is a bad man. Here, watch this. And shall marry another. Wait. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commits adultery. Mm-hmm. And whosoever and whoso marrieth her which is put away does commit adultery. Right? So that thing adultery. You on your third, fourth, second wife, second husband. Adultery. That thing is adultery. Your pastor on the second wife. Adultery. Get out of there and run. Even if it ain't adultery, he, he you get out of there and run. I don't care if his first wife died and he got a new one. That thing's still unlawful for him to be a pastor. According to First Timothy. Right? Books say a husband or what? So how you going? I don't think gonna make sense. Let's, let's just, I mean, logically, let's just play this thing out. Let's just play. I got, I got three wives. I didn't have three wives. Now it's lawfully had three wives. I'm not saying he a sinner. All right, he lawfully had three wives. First wife died, unfortunately, right? Then he got another wife. Got married again. That's lawful. Your first wife died. You can get another one, right? He thought she was a virgin, right? But she wasn't. So he he divorced her right away. You know what I'm saying? Very early. As soon as they got married, they came together to consummate the thing. You know what I'm saying? Found out she wasn't a virgin. Lawfully, he put her away. That was his second wife. Then he got another one. That's his third wife. And the other one, they lived happily ever after. But he, he started preaching the word. Out of order. Now you out of order. Books say you can have one wife. Got to be a husband of one wife. If she die, God forbid, if she die, your butt keep on preaching. You good. Because you was a husband of one wife. She's no longer here, but you was a husband of one wife. You only have one wife. You never had more than one. You go get you another one. You can get another one. It ain't unlawful for you to get another one. You just need to step back. You can't be no preacher. You can't be an overseer. You can't lead a church. You can't lead a congregation. That's crazy. Books say you got to be a husband of one wife. If you got, if you got to tell somebody, second wife, how that, how that add up to one? If you tell somebody, oh, that's my second wife, or you go back and be like, yeah, well, my first wife, how that add up to one when you got a first and a second? Right, you can let these people try to play voodoo on you. Can rationalize, try to can, try to try to weasel your way through. It ain't just the women that can't preach. You sit your darn butt down too. Why these people always picking on the women? Who else, who else y'all here talking about? I talk about the women can't preach, and I tell these the crooked pastor they can't preach either. All this stuff got to be fair. We ain't sitting here just picking on one side. The thing, it got to come down the middle. You can only get in through the door. How are you supposed to get in any other way? I'm going to sit here and let, I used to have a Don Burks. He sit there in the darn church, had a second wife in the church. The boy, and it, look, it wasn't nothing lawful about how he did it. And we just sit here, and we sat there and just sat under the man. I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? We didn't know. Ain't nobody taught us the darn book. Right? Ain't nobody taught us the darn book. Not in a way with conviction that we look at it and be like, you know what, that ain't right. But who knew? They had women preaching at the church. You know what I'm saying? This is all the same, right? We don't care. We don't know no better. We just doing it. We got to get out of that. We got to learn this stuff so we can protect ourselves. That type of stuff will send you to hell. If you got somebody teaching you the book and they ain't got no problem reading husband or one wife, that thing don't even hit them. That thing don't even bother them. 
They rationalize their way out. What else are they rationalizing? What are they teaching you then? We have to care, excuse me, we have to care more about God's truth than to just sit here and let people just twist it and, and lie to us and just kind of sprinkle a little fairy dust on it just so we feel good about, about believing these lies. You can go with this stuff. You can go to all these different things. You can go, you know what I'm saying, you can go listen to uh, Creflo Dollar and Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes and hear all that stuff. And that stuff going to feel real good. They're going to touch on some stuff. You know how real that thing going to be? Not at all. They're going to touch, they touch on some nice little surface stuff for you, right? But at the end of the day, you have to know the truth. You have to get down into the nitty gritty. You have to get down into the details, and that's where you're going to find the truth. You're not going to find the truth out here sitting way up top being vague. You know what I'm saying? Talk about this high-level stuff where nobody getting into detail. Nobody talking about nothing for real. Oh, well, God's grace, and you have to forgive. Okay. Give me some details. Let's dig into it. Let's talk about it. Let's read the words. Let's break it down. Bet you people ain't never going to touch these pages of this book. You sit here and watch Joe, you watch Joe Osteen for, for six years. He ain't never pick up the book and read from it. People be lying. And I see all my people just fall victim to it. Talking to a gentleman out in Africa, he said, and all our people out there just falling victim to it. He said, we the real Hebrew. He confirmed that thing for me. He said, man, all this stuff we look at, we the real Hebrew. He said, that thing made me sick. I see all my people out there Christian. They got colonized by these Christians. These Christians get sprinkle some fairy dust on them. Tell them it's going to be our God love everybody. Just try to make it easy for you. You know what Yahushua told us? He said, it's a narrow way and it's a broad way. Y'all keep going down the broad way. Broad way, you can go any way you want to do. You can do anything you want to do and you're still in the way. The narrow way, you got to go that straight and darn narrow path. That thing, you got to, right, that thing is a restricted path. You got to go this way. You got to restrict yourself to be on there. Broadway, you can do whatever you want. You can skip, cartwheel, turn around, go the opposite direction. It's broad. It's big. Right? You got a whole lot of room to do what you want to do. You tell me which one sounds like more like right then. If the Yahweh will tell you, you got a narrow way that you can go. You got to go straight up and down the middle. And then, and then on the other end of it, you got a darn broad way that you can go. Right? It's, it's open up to both sides. You can go any direction you want. The Christian tell you, it doesn't matter what you do. God's going to love you. Right? And I'm sitting here telling you, you got to line up directly according to what the books say. You tell me which one sound broad and which one sound narrow. Stop letting these people lie to you. This stuff is simple logic. You just sit there. You know what you're reading deep down. Stop letting these people make you feel confused. You know the stuff you be doing is wrong. I'm sitting here and lie to yourself about it. It's wrong to say wrong. I'm, I'm doing something wrong and I don't want to stop. You'd be better off saying that. Sitting here and trying to act like, no, what I'm doing is okay. No, I'm going to be all right. God's still going to love me. No, you say that thing, I'm sinning. God sent my butt right to hell if I don't stop. You keep doing it if you want to, but just be honest with yourself. Don't get to tricking yourself, making you feel like God pleased with what you're doing. He ain't pleased with you. He'll send your butt to hell if you die. Keep going. Where we at? Y'all ain't got me darn riled up tonight. Whosoever marries, whosoever marries her which is put away does commit adultery. Mm -hmm. And his disciples said unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. <laughs> Look, they, <laughs> they was this, like, we might as well the, just... When the disciples heard that, they was like, man, that's how that thing play out. He's like, we might as well just stay by our darn selves. You know what I'm saying? We we might want well to be teaching people they shouldn't even be married. Watch what y'all would say with his smooth butt. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying except to whom it is given. He said, everybody can't. What I'm about to tell you, everybody ain't about to. He ain't, everybody can't receive what I'm talking this about. This only for the real. He said, watch it. For there are some eunuchs who uh -huh. were so born from their mother's womb. A eunuch, a eunuch is like a, a, a virgin, right? He said it's some eunuch that which was born that way. In other words, it was some people that were born in a way they wasn't attracted to women. Right? Or, or they is born in a way 
that that they didn't have, you know what I'm saying, all their members in place where they can, you know what I'm saying, do what they need to do to be married. Right? Keep going. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Right? If some eunuchs, I mean, uh, somebody did something to them when they was younger and they found themselves not attracted to men anymore. I mean, not attracted to women anymore. anymore. Right? Somebody just messed around with them when they was younger in their life, abused them somehow. Some right? And it messed them up where they like, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, I, you know, I just, I don't even want to mess with that no more. That make them a unit. Most high God said, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I understand your problem. I'm just telling you, you ain't got to get you a woman. You don't want a woman. I'm just telling you, don't sleep with a darn man. That, that make you a unit. When you able to obey God, you say, you know what? I'm not really interested in what I'm supposed to be interested in. So you know what? I just stay by my, my, my darn self. That was you. If somebody messed around with you and, and abused you and made you that way, then you was made a unit by the hand of a man. I think they used to mutilate something or something. That's another way you can be made a unit. Yeah. Right? They cut your stuff off, castrate you, you will be made a unit. And that will be made a unit at the hands of a man. Right? That's the same thing, though. It ain't no difference. Ain't no darn difference. Somebody physically cut your stuff off. Somebody play with you as a darn little boy and mess your head up. They cut you off too. Either way, they castrated you. That's what's wrong with that. That's what's wrong with a lot of these people. These people didn't been, been messed with. Right? And people then, ought to go to hell messing with these kids. Keep going. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able right? to Right? So it's it, some. And the last one that he said, he said some people that have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. In other words, he said, I'm not touching nobody. I'm not doing nothing. Just for the simple fact that I'm going to get into the kingdom and be great. Right? Like Paul. And there's some people who will cut their own stuff off. For the sake of the kingdom. Right? I know I can't keep it in my pen. I know I can't stop sleeping around. I know I can't. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut it off. We ain't got to worry about that no more. Right? He said, for the sake of the kingdom, I'll do that. He's trying to let you know, this is a very, very hard thing that I'm saying. He's like, some people are just born as eunuchs. Some people were made eunuchs by somebody else. But then now, there are some people that make themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom. That was his answer to the question of saying, we might as well be alone. He was telling them, if you can handle it. Yeah, some people are alone. If you can handle it, y'all got to, when y'all read y'all sure, y'all got to read. Y'all got to look at what he's saying and put yourself in that situation. Like, you got to be there with him. I think it's like a solid year for me. You know what I'm saying? I got to get away. <laughs> <laughs> Some people can do it. He said, he said, read, read, read that first part where he is. What did he say? Oh, man, can I receive this saying? It Listen. They to whom it is given. So, what you thought? What you were saying? Uh, we're about a good year. Good right? year? I had to get away. Listen, all men can't receive this thing. I, I wasn't even going to play with it. You know what I'm saying? I went, listen, that thing wasn't even going. I was like, Tyler, yeah, let's go, on, let's go on down to the courthouse. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead down there. Because you're a good man. But 10 and a half, 11 months, bro. I was like, I got to get away. Yeah, you're a good man. You know what I'm talking about? Right? He said, not everybody going to receive it. He ain't kidding himself. He ain't kidding y'all. He said, not everybody going to receive this. But hear me out. Right? It's important that we understand what the book talking about. All right? It's very important that we understand what the book talking about. All right? He talking about uncleanness, fornication. If she unclean, fornicating, all right? And you expect to get you a virgin, you can put her away. All right? You can put her away. Don't get to marry with her. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know the situation. You know how she got to you. And then 10 years later, you'd be like, well, she wasn't a virgin. No, nah, don't try that stuff. <laughs> Don't try that darn stuff. No, no, no. Your butt going right to hell. You divorcing your butt. Still committing adultery. You go get you another one. You, you in adultery. Right? That's all that thing is. Right? You do what you want to do. Just make sure you being honest with yourself about it. Don't be sitting here lying about it. Don't be sitting here trying to tell yourself that you are right. That God love you and all this stuff. No, we all got to sit back and look at it. We do something wrong. Well, you know where I, know where I stand. Right? That's, it, it's salvation in knowing where you stand with God. These people try to take that. They try to steal that from you. They try to steal. They try to make you. They try to rock you to sleep. Right? You darn know you on your way to hell. And they try to make you feel like you on your way to the kingdom. There's no protection in that. There's no correction. If you think you're right, there's no reason to change your direction. If you think you headed to the perfect place 
there's no reason to change direction. Now, if you honestly even like, listen, listen, I know I, I know where I'm headed. I know I'm headed right here. I know why I'm headed right here. At least at some point you can be like, nah, man, I know how to fix this. All right? Do what you want to do, but just be honest with yourself while you're doing it. You're going to hell. You know what I'm saying? So just, you know what I'm saying? Repeat that thing to yourself sometime. I'm on my way right to darn hell. See how that thing lighting your butt up? You'll see that thing will save your darn life. Because that's the fear of God. When you fear God, when you fear God is going to send me to hell, and you get scared of that, that is the beginning of salvation. Y'all don't want to hear none of that stuff, though, man. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 23. I appreciate you, Daniel. This is uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. He that is wounded in the stones or has his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Mm. We ain't even gonna we ain't even gonna get into this one. We're gonna talk about we're gonna come back next week and we're gonna talk about the privy members being cut off and who gonna enter into the congregation and who not gonna enter into the congregation. All right? Remember we just talked about the eunuch. That's what that's talking about right now. All right? So, excuse me. All right, so um, next week we'll, we'll get into uh, chapter 23. We'll try to cover a little bit more ground. We already covered some of chapter 24, so we'll get back into there a little bit. <gasps> Excuse me. Um, and then uh, probably the week after that, probably be in Deuteronomy 28, talking about the curses. Um, we'll break those down real nice, uh, talk about, you know, our history of being Hebrews. How does that connect to where we live today? So... Uh, my estimate will be about two weeks. We'll get into that. People always want to hear about Deuteronomy 28, so um, we'll we'll break that down and, and try to uh, try to make sure we can provide some understanding there. But for the for the most part, uh, the book is the book. You know what I'm saying? We just gotta we just gotta make sure we go along with what it say. We believe in what it say, and then we walk in what it say. You know what I'm saying? That's when we walk outside. That's when we unsafe. At any moment, Most High God can take us, call our number. And then we have to, we, have, we just have to be ready to answer whatever we do. Just be honest with yourself. All right, be honest with yourself. It's always the opportunity to make a change. Come clean, clean it all up. All right. Any questions? Let's pray out.